Mesdames et Messieurs, bonsoir. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Jaroslav Zakariev. I am Deputy Director of the Institut Français du Royaume-Uni. And I am absolutely thrilled to welcome you this evening at Cine Lumière uh, for the opening of the French Film Festival, the annual rendezvous with the best of new French cinema, which starts here in Cine Lumière in London and continues in more than 40 cities around the country. This year, we will present at Cine Lumière not less than 29 films and 45 screenings of both new films and classics, fiction and documentaries. Many of the latest high-profile French productions with films that were selected and won awards in the most important international festivals around the world, such as Cannes, Venise, Berlin, like Saint-Omer by Alice Diop, awarded with Golden Lion, Les Amandiers, Riposte Féministe, Close, were all selected at the Cannes Film Festival, or Annie Colère, selected at the Locarno Film Festival, and many more films released in France recently that often don't have a UK distributor yet. The French Film Festival will be a unique opportunity for you to see some of them on a big screen. Three films in the selection this year have been nominated to represent their country at the Oscars. Saint-Omer for France, Nofrangin for Algeria, and The Blue Kaftan from Morocco. Several screenings will be accompanied by discussions with notable guests, including Charlotte Gainsbourg, Blandine Lenoir, and Patrice Lecomte. An important strand of the festival this year, of which tonight's film is a part, is Women's Rights Now, a cycle of films and discussions tackling issues faced by women around the world. Tonight's film, A Plein Temps, is our opening title, and it will get a UK release in March, courtesy of Parkland Distribution, that we thank. A Plein Temps is directed by Eric Gravel, we are honored that he's made the trip to London today to talk about his film. There will be a discussion uh, and a Q&A session after the screening. This edition is a special one. The French Film Festival celebrates its 30 years. For three decades, a group of enthusiastic and dedicated francophile and French cinema lovers has been bringing to the audiences in the UK the newest film productions from France presented by actors and directors. My congratulations and warmest thanks to Richard Moe, the director of the festival, uh, his team for the continued cooperation. Thank you, Richard. A huge thank you also to the teams at the Institut Français du Royaume-Uni the programming team, Diane, Claire, Agathe, Roberto, the communications team, our projectionists, and our ushers. Our thanks to UniFrance and Wallonie-Bruxelles International for their support in bringing directors and actors to the festival in London and around the UK. Finally, special thanks to the Kensington Hotel for hosting our guests during the festival. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce Richard Moe, director of the festival, and Eric Gravel, director of the film. Merci, Vagoslav. Merci beaucoup. Thank and thank you, by the way, for doing all those thank yous, because that saves me from having to do them. But I'd just like to repeat uh, your words for the people here in the cinema and all our cinemas around the UK, because the festival stretches from Shetland down as far as Plymouth, and uh, there are many big centers, but there are also very small community centers as well. So it's a festival that really, really has got a grip on the UK in 30 years. And we're so pleased to see that. We're also, uh, an another part of the festival that gives me particular pleasure is our young persons program, our, our séance scolaire. Some of them obviously are here, but we also have screenings in schools, so thousands and thousands of school children throughout the country are picking up on French culture and French language, as well as being able to see some really intriguing French movies. 
So that is an important part, and I think it's especially important part. I know that we shouldn't reflect on this occasion, which is celebratory. It's three decades of the French Film Festival, after all. But I think as borders start to come up in around Europe, and uh, Great Britain and the UK is not alone in doing some of that stuff, um, I think festivals and culture, which transcends borders and leap over different cultures, it's more important to have these outlets than ever. So that is another reason for our festival to keep going. Now, I'm going to emulate Eric's film, and I'm going to try and speed things up, because his film goes at a breakneck speed, as you'll probably see very shortly. So our tally of titles, for those of you who are numbers freaks, and I can see somebody down there with a calculator checking out if I've got the numbers right, it's 62 titles across 40 venues, 262 screenings, and uh, they take place over 44 days. So we're really, really on at the beginning. I think after 44 days, I might manage to crawl up on this stage, but uh, tonight I'm still standing. We've got 26 UK premieres, and we're very grateful to all our UK distributor friends. Uh, Santo Mer, the Alice Diop film that Dragoslav mentioned, is going forward at four potential Oscar win. The last time a French movie won an Oscar was 30 years ago. It was Indochine by Régis Barnier, which we screened in our very first French film festival. So I think maybe serendipity will come into play there, <laughs> and it might be possibly a lucky omen. Who knows? We hope so. Now, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Eric Cravel. This is his second feature. And as was mentioned, it's going to come out on UK screens uh, after, after the festival in March next year. But it's proving a big hit with cinema programmers. It's already proved a big hit with audiences wherever it's been shown around the world. So, Eric, quelques mots avant la projection. Yeah, only quelques mots. Uh, well, thank, thank you very much. Um, Thank you. First, thank you to, to be here. It's very, it's great for a director, you know, having a, 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 a theater full of people. It's like, a, you know, when a, you're a kid with a big chocolate cake, you know, it's, it's, it's what you, you want, you know. Um, uh, I, I'm not talking too much uh, uh, before the film. I think the best way to see a film is no, the less you know, the, the, the greater it is. It is. But, um, well, I, I'm... At the end, I, I, I'll be more than welcome, you know, I'll, uh, to to talk to you. Uh, I love talking about my film, but after the film, you know, when when everybody has seen it, uh, it's just it's an honor to be here tonight, you know, to uh, you know start the festival. It's an honor to have you. Oh, thank right. you very much. So I, I'm not gonna talk m much more and just let you see the movie, and uh, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you to be uh, here. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. I think people are just getting comfortable again for the second part um, for the Q&A, which I'm delighted to introduce with the director of our film tonight, Aplanton, Eric Ravel, who you saw at the beginning. And I wanted to start off actually by congratulating Eric because this evening he's found out that his film has won the Prix du Festival at the American French Film Festival in Los Angeles. So. <laughs> A felicitous occasion. Um, I really loved your film. I found it completely engaging, compulsive. Um, and what I really liked about it was the fact that it's a film about work, which is something that I think a lot of people can relate to. And quite a common theme, I think, in French culture, perhaps increasingly lately and in films. But what's more unusual is to have a film about a woman focused on her work. She is a mother. But that isn't really the focus of the story. There's a romance plot flirted with, but absolutely dispatched. So I just wanted to ask you, um, I think also your first film was about a woman and her working life to some extent. Yeah. So, you know, what attracted you to this theme? Well, it's kind of difficult to answer that. I think I, I'll be able to answer in a few years probably because it, it, it's always starting from a basic idea. The basic idea of the film was to talk about 
people that I know around where I live because where you see where she lives, it's around where I live. So I, I want to talk about these people around. Uh, uh, you know, my, my neighbors that do that every day. And uh, I have to do this trip, uh, not every day, but sometimes. And I realize I saw, uh, every time I saw the same faces. Uh, and um, my first idea was to, you know, talk about that, you know, try to find a way to talk about that. Because talking about somebody that, you know, go to work and come back every day and uh, can be not that interesting. So I, I thought if I... Take an angle, you know the the how you feel about taking the train every day, and how you, I felt, you know, and I, how I expect to others to felt, and it makes sense to take the angle of a mother of a single mother because I thought, you know, it's during strikes, and how people who are cannot go on strikes, uh, you know, during strikes are are, are you know feeling this and that that's how it 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 became you know a story of a single mother but um and what i found interesting is the fact that she's a how do you say it's a anglo uh, in a you know you, you don't uh, blind, spot. blind spot yeah thank you she's she's on the blind spot of the, the these strikes you know and i want somebody who is on the blind spot that you don't see that is is, is transparent. So it makes sense to talk about this woman, you know. I think that any parent, will, you know, they will resonate to hear that idea that you can't go on strike. Um, and I'm sure lots of people will uh, have thoughts on the way that you certainly do feel for her and, you know, you're really in her subjectivity. Um, but I guess thinking about the sort of uh, affect of the film, if you like, um, I'm struck as well by how much jeopardy there is in it for a film which is about kind of ordinary life. You know, there's this kind of incredible pressure and sense of menace and that's what makes it um, so difficult to tear your eyes away from, I think, to tear your attention away from. Um, so I was kind of interested in your generic influences because in a way the film reminds me of an action film, you know, something like Speed or Thriller, like 24 or something, um, which is, you know, ideologically interesting to me the fact that the kind of the hero is actually somebody that's uh, you know, just managing normal life, right? Real life heroes. Uh, but in another way, you mentioned to me earlier social realism, British social realism as a tradition you like, but uh, there's also a great tradition in France and maybe thinking back to some of the cinema um, of the Jeune Cinéma Français, so people like uh, Eric Zonka, um, Bruno Dumont, uh, Laetitia Masson. So I wondered, if you see your film as kind of between those two traditions of something more mainstream, or is it more um, of a kind of serious political film? Well, I know my first film was about, like you said, uh, um, a woman and, and, uh, and work. It was a social movie about uh, outsourcing, and, but it was a satire. So I knew, I think it's a pattern for me, maybe. It's my second film, and I'm... I try to find a way to. I, I know I knew I, I didn't want to make a naturalistic film. I want to, you know, use the. the I'm a big cinephile. I like cinema. I like, you know, the way we can, you know, the, the language of cinema. And I, the feeling that I had when I, I I commute, you know, do this. It was like something very stressful. And I said, where do you feel that kind of stress? And it's in thriller or action movies. And I I thought. Uh, I was starting to watch some action movie just to know, uh, can it make sense? And I realized one thing, it's that when you, you watch an action movie, something that, uh, that I realize is that you, you know what the hero think he, he, he's, he's, um, he has a mission. And I said, well, this woman has missions. So I, I wanted to, uh, you know, try to find a way to, 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 uh, these two things go together pretty well, I think, because it's a psychological thriller. So I want to, you know, find a way that you know we'll we'll feel like it's a it's an action hero because you, we know what's her mission. And I thought maybe it can work, and that's what I like about the fact that you know cinema you can it's his own language, and I don't have to be you know real or realistic because I don't think the film is pretty realistic in the story is realistic but the I remember asking the actors to play uh, faster and the editing to be just a little bit 
more than the reality to just have not what reality is, but the, what she feel and how she feel her own reality. It's more a perception of her own reality, how she feels when she takes the train, how she feels when she has to go to this interview. And I want to, you know, uh, put in the cinematography the, the the feeling she had, you know, so we we can be with her. That that was my uh, my goal. Yeah. So I'm wondering if uh, we have any questions from the audience. Um, yes, I see one down here, um, my left. I think we have two roving mics. I think you also got an award at Venice, didn't you, for the film? You got an award at Venice. Oh, Let's see. two. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say it's worth mentioning that. Um, I'm getting very allergic to music in my old age, but I thought the score for this was absolutely magnificent, and it really added to the really added to the atmosphere and the impetus of the film. I don't really have any thoughts on that. Well, um, I knew when I was writing. I, I'm, when I'm writing, I don't uh, listen to music, but I have my inner music, and I had this kind of uh, very seventies electronic nonstop music that. I, you know, I was stressed when I <laughs> wrote the script, and I had this stressful music in me, and I knew I want this kind of electronic music, 70s electronic music. So when we were ready, I, I told my producers, I said, um, I don't want to, uh, you know, ask a composer, a film composer, for this kind of music. I said, just try to find... Um, composer or uh, electronic music artist that already do their own stuff and when we find somebody that you know is stuff is the good stuff that we want and we uh, we met seven seven different uh, composer well more artists than composer for film they some of them already made uh, music and we show them the, the movie the, we, we edit the movie without music because the first thing I wanted was the uh, the rhythm of the character. So I said to the editor, try to edit the film without the music, and we, we tried that. Sometimes it, it makes kind of some scene a little bit difficult, but at one point we, we found our way, we had our story, we knew our inner rhythm, and when we were ready, we, we, we present the film to composer. And uh, Irene Drezel, who made the music, she's, she's, um, she's not a, uh, it's, it's her first uh, uh, music for film. She's an she's a electronic artist, scene artist, so she made music more in concert and stuff like that. And I said to her, you know, you, you have a kick, you know, the poom, poom, poom. I said, under that, I hear my film. So the only thing she had to do, she had to do her own music. She presented me different kind of mood. And I said, yeah, this mood is good for this part. This mood is good for this part. And we, we start uh, working like that. And I really had, uh, uh, well, her music was what I felt was good for the movie. So it was a way for me as a director, you know, it's very difficult for a director to say, this is the kind of music I want to a uh, composer. That's the, the one of the most difficult part to explain. I'm not a musician, so it's kind of very difficult to explain to a musician what kind of music you have in mind. But if they have already the thing that you, you say, yeah, I hear what you, you do is what I hear and what I have in my mind. And that was it. So, And she's a great... Uh, Irene is, a, is an amazing worker. She... She's uh, she she's great. She really wanted to, and she 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 came to the uh, sound editing room uh, to listen to uh, the editor, uh, sound editor, to, uh, to 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 try to work together. So it was a great great part. Yeah, it was, uh, but it was very difficult because we were in mixing. You know, it was too much, not enough, and uh, it's a very difficult music to uh, to edit because you don't want to, you know. When we present the film in Venice, uh, I've seen the film uh, uh, five times the week before, and when we were in Venice presenting the film, I said, oh my gosh, because the, f the music was, you know, I was fed up hearing the music, and I was like, oh, what? <laughs> I made <laughs> I made a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Be people will you know uh, scream at my film because I, that was the feeling that I had because I was listening too much. <laughs> you know, fortunately, <laughs> it, it passed. <laughs> and I think your uh, composer is picking up the award tonight in LA, right? 
Uh, no, but, well, it, it's a LA uh, festival, but she 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 picked up the the prize in Paris. Yeah, yeah. She, she must be happy for her first film. To yeah, be and she won a prize in. Uh, she won a prize in. Uh, she was delighted. She won a prize in uh, Beijing uh, for for her music. So she was uh, really really proud. Do we have any other questions um, around the room? Yes, uh, my first the one near the back, sort of. There's a gentleman, I think, three yet rows from the back or so. And then we have another one as well. Hi. Thank you for the film. I'm extremely stressed, and I think... Uh, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will keep thinking about the film for at least a week. Um, and we'll definitely have questions, but you will not be there. Um, I was just wondering, I really like this... Um, Actress, um, did you have her in mind while writing the film, or did you cast afterwards? Uh, no, I, tr I don't. I try not to have uh, somebody in mind when I I'm writing. So, some, well, no. Sometimes I have dead actors in mind when I write, so I know I'm not gonna ask them. But no, <laughs> I don't have uh, ac actors in mind, and I didn't have um, Laure Kelamy in mind until uh, the, the film was finished and we were ready to, uh, to propose the role to an actress. And I, I, um, I, had a, uh, I was the one who had the idea of uh, law because I, I've seen her in, well, she's well known in France. She was well known. She, she didn't have a, a first uh, uh, feature film role uh, when I, I proposed the role to her. But um, I've seen her in comedy, but in drama too. So I find she has a very large range of acting. And I knew on paper that the role was kind of harsh. She was kind of a tough woman. And I want to have somebody that, you know, you, you can say, you know, th this girl, she's not, she's in a bad, you know, bad, bad, bad part of her life, but she's a nice girl, you know. And I want somebody that, you know, you can... You can say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, uh, je peux, on peut tout lui pardonner. Uh, you know. Give her anything. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I I uh, told my uh, my producer about this idea and to my uh, casting director, and they loved the idea too. So it was obvious that uh, you know she was right for the role. So we, we we proposed the role to her, and she she said yes. And we just we just discussed about the role. And uh, we knew we saw the same woman. We we had in mind the same woman, so it was kind of uh, easy. She's a she's a a big worker too. So during shooting, you know, she she always arrived with a proposition for every scene. And I was like the first spectator, you know, I was there, you know, watching what she was doing and say, yeah, that's good. Uh, no, maybe it's like that. So it was kind of a great exchange between her, her and me. And she was ready to try anything. So sometimes some scenes we try a very different part. And and it was fun because at every time we were, you know, saying, yeah, I think, you know, like she, she cried at the end and it was obvious. We tried some scene when she cried and we said, no, it has to be at the end. Uh, she, she's, she, she's strong, she, she keep it uh, all, the, all the time. But La was uh, was what was great about her. She she had um, confidence in me because I asked her to do some stuff sometime that was not obvious, and she said I'm gonna give it to you. So, but you know, and I said to her, you know, uh, trust me, I'm not gonna do something that uh, you, you're not gonna agree. You, you you'll see, it's gonna be great. And with the editor, I remember saying to the editor, you know, we do a lot of stuff for the film, but we have to protect the acting. You know, the acting is the most important part. And we were like, yeah, it has to be the the character, the character, the character. Yeah. Um, I, I'm struck uh, by the way that as an actress, she does have that grittiness, that toughness you're talking about. And it's interesting to hear that she is a hard worker because that's often you know, a, a, a trait of her characters on screen as well. But also, um, I was talking to a friend who watched her in the film Antoinette dans les Cévennes, which is called My Lover, My Donkey and Me in English. And it's on Curzon Home Cinema. It's very good, funny. Um, and they said, but she has this incredible vulnerability as well, you know. And I think that she, she does have those sort of two sides for me, and that's really works, you know, informs that part perfectly. I'm also interested to ask you about the ending, but I won't abuse my privilege yet and see if there's time. So I think we had another one question in the middle here, please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hi. hi, thank you for this film. Um, my question really followed on from that, which was 
just really a comment on her grace and her kind of, you know, uh, dignity under this pressure and the fact that she never sort of really, really lost it. And I just wondered if that was something, you know, there's this constancy to her um, and you feel like everything's crazy around her, but she kind of has this really steady presence. I wondered if, is that something that was on the page? Is that something that you developed? And was it important to you that, you know, she she just had this such a graceful kind of dignity with how she went through it all? Well, I remember saying to Laure that, um, she, saying to her, she's a rock and she, she crack from everywhere, but she don't break, you know, and that was the main, I, I remember, when I was writing the film, saying, you know, if we can do something like a painter, just a, a, a just a brush, you know, so just just a gesture, you know, if the film can be just a ge gesture, and there was something like that about the character too, you know, like she's going for one thing, or it's not only one thing; she has a different thing, but that it's you know, she follow a line and she stay to that line, and that's. Something and it's simple. It's simple and complicated at the same time because I, 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 when I was writing, I didn't want to talk about her past. So she's a woman that lived in the present because what I want to, you know, I said this woman don't have time to think about anything else. So I want for uh, when you see the film is the same thing. We're not talking about her past or about where she comes from or whatever because we're in the in the the. the the time zone is now and only now because she cannot uh, afford to think about anything else and so it was easy to to uh, to have this idea of the character and what i i remember saying to la you know um you're a chess player you know three three move in advance at the beginning in the middle of the film, you just know two, and at the end, you don't know the next move. It's always just in your face. And I remember the the scene. I think it's one of my favorite scenes. It's when she's in front of the mirror and she she's putting her makeup and she's you know the, she's crying and she tried not to and she don't want to. And uh, it wasn't supposed to be that scene at all. And uh, when we decide to do that because of production uh, production. Uh, problems uh, I find yeah that was great that was you know exactly what I want to say about her you know it's cracking and she don't want to she and you see that she's not accepting that you know she she don't make a compromise and it makes sense with her with uh, her professional life because you see that you know She's a woman that, you know, accept only perfection. She's accept only to be the strongest, to be, uh, you know, she, 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 no is not an answer. So it makes sense on every way. So like I said, it was kind of simple because it was clear in our mind what we wanted to do with her, you know. Um, I'll take the question from the back left maybe next and then I'll come to you. Um, I really enjoyed the film. I uh, just had a question about the ending and her tears. To me, it felt uh, very much like um, she was relieved, but also uh, dis in despair. Um, and that I wanted to get your impression if that if that was something you meant to convey or was deliberate or was my own. <laughs> Personal layering. <laughs> yeah. Now we want to have amb ambiguity. That was important. And I remember talking to Laure and saying, you know, there's a relief, and at the same time, there, there's something very scary about what's what's gonna come after that. And I remember, you know, I said, yeah, it's easy for me to ask her that, but how she's gonna play that? And when we uh, we we did the shot, and with the the manage behind, that was not. Carousel. Yeah, the carousel. It was not, uh, we were not prepared to do it this way. And when we saw the carousel, we said, okay, yeah, that that's, is what we want to say, you know. So we, we shot it like that. And we were, you know, just crossing our finger, having, you know, waiting to see how law will, will uh, play the scene. And when we did this, the one that you saw, everybody was like, 
watching at each other saying, well, that's exactly how... Because, you know, all the team, you know, the, you, you think it's the director and or his actress, but it's all the team. It's the DOP, it's the assistant. You know, they know the film. They work for, you know, 10 weeks uh, and, and plus, the, plus the preparation. These people feel the film too. And we were all looking at each other saying, yeah, that's what we feel about the film about this woman, about the ambiguity of how she felt about the fact that she has, what choice does she have but to say yes at something that will make her life not easier, but at the same time, you know. So yeah, it's, a, it's exactly what we wanted to say. And my film talk about, you know, the balance between her work and her, li and her personal life. And at the end, that's another question. It, I think I, I'm... I, it's more a film about questioning than answering, you know. Um, did we have one? Yes, here. Uh, thank you. Uh, your movie was incredible, very suffocating, but uh, fantastic. Um, I just, um, I thought you, your movie is all about women. Um, she's the superhero, her boss is a woman, the woman who helped her with the kids is the woman, the woman who hired her. It, it's and basically all the men are are the baddies. The husband is not there. He he never answers. He's absent. Um, the guy who at the beginning helped her to take the taxi let her down. Uh, the 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 guy who she wants to to kiss finally doesn't want her. So it's it, do you consider your movie as very feminist? It's all about the heroes uh -huh. and the, the 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 movement of the moment. Yeah. It's all about. Uh, uh, I'm. I don't think my my first movie was in 2017, and it was almost you know 80 uh, percent of the cast, 90 uh, percent of the cast was women too. I think basically, if you ask if I make feminist movie, that's not my purpose. I would have to say it's. I like actress. Maybe I. I think I, uh, I write for women easy, easily or easier than for men. So maybe that's the first thing. And after that, but well, I don't know. Probably huh? it's about a woman. It's about a mental charge. Can you say that? Yeah. So. Uh, mental load. Yeah. So of course it's more women than men. So, but at the same time, I think it's I, I like. Well, I think it the first. Reason is because I like uh, movies with women. I like, you know, when I was a kid, I watched uh, uh, Women Under the Influence. That really it strikes me, you know, as a kid. When I saw it too young, so I was like, my God, that's that's very, very powerful. And I like actress, so maybe that's the first reason. But I think I have other reason. But it's gonna take more films to start to understand more, you know, more Oedipian. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Um, otherwise, I might ask you a bit about the actual shooting. Um, what about you know the strikes? Was it all? Sh I guess there, it wasn't really during the strikes, was it? It was during COVID. Right. So, so in a way, maybe that made it easier to kind of shoot on location and well, create these conditions. Well, I wouldn't say easier <laughs> because uh, <laughs> I had to find some traffic, and it was kind of hard. There was no traffic in Paris. There was, there wasn't. Nobody in 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 uh, you know in, in in train station, so everything was kind of fake. And at the same time, we well, so so that. But at the same time, that was that was good that I, I had chosen to make a film about you know a woman and and film her very close every time. So it was kind of it helped us to to hide the you know what what we didn't have. So, like at the at the uh, train station, we had just 50, uh, 50 extras. So I put if I shoot that way, I was I had all the fifty extras that way, and if I f shoot that way, the same fifty extras. So if you watch the film again, you'll see there's a lot of extras that's come back uh, often, you know. And for the traffic, I had to we had to stop shooting because we didn't know where to shoot the traffic and we stopped the shooting La went to work on another film and while she was working on the other film I was like watching in the morning in Paris where I can find in this angle at that time of the day 50 cars or 20 cars waiting at a light 
and saying, okay, yeah, we, yeah, it can work there. We can have, uh, you know, something that looks like a, like a traffic jam, but there was n not much. So everything was like, you know, we had to to fight for uh, to find every every uh, single shot. You know. Uh, any any further questions arising? Um, well, did you shoot it over a short time period, like the you know time within the story is quite compressed, or not at all? You know, sort of Kubrick style methods of <laughs> pressurizing oh, her. No, we were we had um, the thing is I, my, on my two films I had a lot I have a lot of uh, scene I have one, I had a hundred and ninety four scene and it's a lot for a small budget film. So and uh, so we had to put everything together. Like the first day of shooting, it was 35 degrees outside, and the last day was almost zero. We we we, were, we shoot uh, eight weeks, but the first day was September 15, and La was like uh, have a, a, a scarf, and uh, and she was like, "Can I put out the scarf?" Because I said, "No, you're gonna thank me in two months," because you know, and uh, she was outside in front of the of the hotel. And it, the first day, it's one of the first scene of the film when she arrive, and one of the last scene when she uh, get fired. And we had to do all these scene in one day, so that was a very difficult uh, thing to to do. It's to have the exact energy for the the actor. So my script, more than saying you know it's the right or the left. Uh, you know, for the the, the 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 bag or stuff like that. It was like, what's her energy right now? Because everything has to fit when it's not when it's will with it will be all together. And the first day was awful because she had to decide. We had to decide. Okay, that's how she's gonna feel at the end of the film, and it's gonna be that. So I had to say to La, give me everything you had because we knew. What she had to go through, so that was kind of difficult, you know, to figure it out. And more and more, we went to the the the, the, the shooting. We knew, okay, we we were from we're out from this scene, and that's how she was, and now she can be. But because it's uh, when I said it's not realistic, it's that there's ellipse everywhere, you know. She and at the same time, you know, if you're realistic between two scenes, if there's you know an hour, well, she she's gonna get down, she's gonna get feel you know more relaxed but we didn't want that i want to have a, a continuity in her uh, in her reaction even if there's an hour between the two scenes just to make it more you know um, you pulled it off <laughs> yeah so that that was a that was a yeah that was a complicated thing to do yeah mm, maybe we have time for one more couple um i would be quite Interested to ask you a bit more about locations in the sense that you told me, you know, you live in, in, in Bourgogne yourself and uh, this is where maybe she's living, but actually you didn't want it to be lo localizable to any specific place. Um, I mean, I sort of thought it might be a nice banlieue when I was watching it. I don't know what other people thought. Um, but when you've shown the film abroad, in fact, it's kind of resonating very strongly in Korea and in Brazil. So I, I think, you know, I wonder whether you were conscious you were making a kind of timely comment on the, the, the way we live and work now and the sort of emptying out of city centers and as prices rise, the fact that more and more people are commuting and, and probably kind of globally. Um. Well, I, I didn't realize that until we start to show the movie outside of France. Well, we start by sh showing the movie, uh, you know, in Venice. So the, the, the first uh, place we showed the movie was in Italy. And I, I realized at that time that, you know, the film makes sense outside of France because I thought is it you know I think every director thinks something like that you know would it talk to somebody else then you know I was talking about my reality so you know you try to say is it gonna be interesting is it gonna ring a bell for somebody else than me and of course, uh, after I, 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 I start to present the film uh, in different countries, I realized it was a global problem to everybody lives in, in every big city, not even so big city. That's strange because, you know, even in Venice, they said, well, yeah, we have this problem in Venice because we live, uh, I don't know, uh, they, they, they say the, 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 I don't know, Padova or around, there's there's neighbors, you know, around around Venice and they have to 
to do the commute even even there, there. so it was like everywhere i think there's the, the, the city are spreading everywhere people try to you know pay have a nice house outside it's it's everywhere like that so uh, of course in korea the the, the korean or the uh, woman in rio de janeiro they said that's our story that's not your story that's <laughs> It's our story, so of course uh, you realize that you know. By well, you know the uh, it's the, the 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 thing that they say. You know, if you talk locally, it it means globally. But for this one, it was the case because I really I didn't expect that. I was really trying to, you know, talk about the people around me. You know, the, my neighbors and. Uh, and you don't even need to have a big commute to have that feeling of kind of being one yeah. chess move away from it all collapsing when you're juggling work and families, which you know more and more people do with two-person mm. uh, income households. So I think, it, yeah, I, I'm not surprised it resonated everywhere. Um, I think we should wrap up there. So I hope that you will all join me in, in thanking Eric very much for a wonderful evening. Thank you.